Lesson 8 on our cross-country flight plan involves calculating out a portion of our climb. What we're interested to know is how many minutes will it take us to arrive at our cruise altitude. We want to depart from a field elevation of 1,000 feet. So we will say this is 1,000 feet, and we're going to climb up to 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet, 4,000 feet, 5,000 feet, plus 500. So on average, we climb about 500 feet per minute. We've been flying this airplane for 12 or 13 lessons, and we notice that most of the time, we climb out about 500 feet. So how many minutes would it take us to climb from 1,000 feet up to 5,500 feet? Well, you can draw it out like this if you want to, and you can say, that will take a minute, that will take two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes. So it will take us about nine minutes to reach our altitude. You could also realize that 5,500 minus the 1,000 feet we started at gives us 4,500 feet to climb. And we could just simply divide that number by 500, and we would also get 9. So you can do it either way. Um, once you've calculated this out a couple times, it'll become much easier to you, and you'll be able to calculate it out pretty quickly. Now, we also have a time, fuel, and distance to climb chart out of the POH that we can take a look at if we want to. So the time, fuel, and distance to climb chart out of the POH tells us that the conditions would be flaps up, full throttle, standard temperature. We have to go to our pressure altitude column, and we said that we want to climb to 5,500, but our pressure altitude was actually 5,000. So 5,000 is what we're actually climbing to. And then our climb speed, it shows us that when we first take off, we would climb around a speed of 73, and then we actually get to maintain 73 up to 5,000, and then you would see if you climbed much higher, the speed would actually decrease. Your rate of climb starts off pretty good, somewhere around uh, six, 700 feet, but then the rate of climb depletes as we climb higher and higher, and it ends up somewhere around 500, 550 feet a minute. Then it says from, the, uh, from sea level to climb, if you wanted to climb up to 5,000 feet pressure altitude, it says eight minutes, but we started around 1,000 or 500-ish for the pressure altitude. So you could really subtract a half a minute or a minute off there if you wanted to. Um, so it's saying that you'd actually take seven and a half minutes to uh, reach your climb. It says that the fuel used would be the 1.9 minus 0.2. Where am I getting the 0.2 from? was because our pressure altitude for our departure was actually around 500 feet. So I'm just interpolating between these two, interpolating between these two. But on the, to be on the safe side, it would be better just to use this number anyways, because then you know that you're claiming that you're using more fuel than you actually should, because we don't ever want to run out of fuel. The distance, it says in nautical miles, that we would travel about 10 miles probably minus one mile because we departed off a thousand foot field with 500 foot pressure altitude. So it's saying that we would cover about nine miles, but keep in mind, this is with a no wind situation. So obviously if you had a headwind, you wouldn't possibly make it to 10 miles. And if you had a tailwind, you may have traveled 12 or 13 miles, who knows? Anyways, be sure to pay attention to the note section it says to add 1.4 gallons of fuel for engine start, taxi, and takeoff allowance. Well, if you're departing from an airport that's very busy and you possibly could be number five in line for takeoff, or maybe you have a really long taxi, you may consider adding more fuel than just using the 1.4. So I would definitely round this up to two gallons or even 2.5 gallons to be on the safe side. 
on your check ride, your examiner wants to know that you know how to pull the proper numbers off of these charts, but your examiner also is very interested in the fact that you're able to round up to a much safer value. It also says that you should lean the mixture if you're climbing up above 3,000 feet. It says increase time, fuel, and distance by at least 10% for each 10 degrees above standard temperature. Well, the weather briefer told us that the temperature was a good 10 degrees above standard today, so we would definitely want to increase all of these values by at least 10%. Furthermore, it reminds you that the distances shown are based on zero wind. So, like I said, with the distance that it shows you will have traveled here, it may not be that far if you're fighting a strong headwind. So we can use the uh, time, fuel, and distance to climb chart from the POH if we wanted to climb out at this particular speed, or we could use numbers that we're familiar with by just flying the plane regularly. Also, we typically climb out at an airspeed closer to 80 knots, which is a normal climb speed. This is more of a VY climb speed. And by climbing out closer to 80 knots or so, it allows the nose of the airplane to have a lower angle of attack, which allows more airflow to come into your engine to help keep your engine cool, especially on these hot summer days. So we're now able to start filling in some of the blanks on our navigation log. We know that our departure will be golf mic uniform, and we know that our top of climb is going to take about nine minutes. So on our navigation log, the altitude will be in the middle of climbing for this particular segment here, and we can fill out any blanks that we know. So now we know time, ETE stands for estimated time and route. So we are estimating that it will take us nine minutes to get to the top of our climb. Once we reach our climb, our altitude will be 5,500.